Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to talk about smart locks, and we'd like to thank Never Falter for a four-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. We'd also like to thank Mike Luoma from the Glow in the Dark radio podcast for mentioning our podcast on his podcast. Yay. One of the first smart locks was a time lock that was put on bank safes in the late 1800s. Are you calling it a smart lock? Yes. It had a built-in clock that was wound up, and it only allowed the combination lock to be operated at one time during the day, usually when the bank opened in the morning. Because in the 1860s and 1870s, bank robbers were kidnapping bank employees at night, bringing them back to the bank and forcing them to open the safes. Hmm. And this stopped that. Cool. Let's start with what is a smart lock. So in general, it's a door lock that allows you to unlock it without a physical key. What does that mean? So it could be controlled with an app on your phone or a fob. It could have a keypad or a fingerprint sensor. There are quite a few different styles. Some work with smart speakers or home security systems. Why don't we cover them? Because what else are we going to talk about? (laughs) So if you get a lock that works with Wi-Fi, you can download an app to your phone, and you can open and close the lock with your phone. You can check whether the lock is locked or unlocked from anywhere, and the app can show you the history when the lock was opened and closed. Mm -hmm. With Wi-Fi, you don't need a separate hub or system. With Z-Wave or Zigbee locks, you need a hub to connect to your Wi-Fi, or you would integrate the lock with an existing system, like SmartThings or Wink. So check what wireless system the smart door lock uses when you're comparing models. Okay. With Bluetooth smart locks, you can open the lock with an app, or the lock can sense the Bluetooth from your phone and unlock it when you get in range. And some Bluetooth locks have a fob, so you can open the lock. Bluetooth devices generally have a range of around 30 feet. So like a key fob? Right. Like for your car? Right. Yeah, similar to that. Exactly. So you're going to carry the fob but not a key? (laughs) Right. So some are pretty cool. So if you went and got groceries and you're unloading your car and you got your hands full, as you walk up to the door, it automatically unlocks. But you still have to open it. Right. But at least you don't have to try to get in Until they start uh, opening the door for you. (laughs) Yes. Robots. Yes, or a butler. (laughs) Keypad door locks let you have multiple codes, so you can give a unique code to family members or to someone who needs to get in, and then you can change the code or remove it. If you have a keypad lock with Wi-Fi, you can get an alert when the door has been opened and closed. Hmm. Fingerprint sensors are programmed to a fingerprint, and they open when a registered fingerprint is read. And you can have multiple people and their fingerprints stored in the lock. And some of the new scanners have advanced 3D sensors to detect a real finger, so not a copied or lifted fingerprint, Hmm. which is pretty high tech. I don't know whether you'd be concerned with that with a home. But one article I read said a fingerprint lock is considered more secure than a keypad lock because every fingerprint is unique and they're hard to fake. And then locks can have a variety of features together. So one lock could have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, a keypad, and a cylinder. So you can also use a key to unlock it. Interesting. These type of locks use batteries? Right. Most use standard batteries. One lock I looked at had a rechargeable battery that could be removed and charged. No way. All, All the other door locks I looked at use standard batteries and the expected battery life was between six months and a year for normal use. They say if you have a Wi-Fi door lock, it's going to drain the battery faster than Z-Wave, Zigbee, or Bluetooth. Hmm. I wish I would have known that before today, because I was messing with my cats the other day, Mm -hmm. because I have one of these locks. I was using the app on my phone to unlock the door lock, because they know the sound. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> they go run into it. Yes, and they were just staring at the door. <laughs> Good exercise. I, See, I, this is another benefit <laughs> for a smart door lock. Exercise your yeah, calves. Yeah, but I just drain the batteries. Right. <laughs> what are some advantages of a smart lock? If you have a Wi-Fi lock, you can check that the door is locked when you're out. You can give access to somebody without having to create an extra key or giving them your key. If you have a keypad style lock, you don't need a key. So if you've lost your key or forgot your keys, you can get back into your house. With well, it's been nice when we've done some videos at our friend's house. Mm -hmm. And he just gave us the code to get into oh, yeah, his yeah, very without cool. waiting for one of his million roommates to come. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah they're, they're convenient for that. You can also keep track of when the door is locked and unlocked. You can get alerts if your door is unlocked. You can open the door for somebody if you aren't able to be at the house, so it's safer than having a key under an entrance mat. Mm -hmm. And some of these styles that I looked at are rekeyable yourself. You don't have to take it to a hardware store. So if you have a matching lock, let's say you have an entrance lock, a knob or a lever that's a quick set, for example, and you get a quick set smart lock, you can key it the same so the same key will fit in both locks. Right. You can keep track of your kids. You can check when they said they came home. Mm. Some locks automatically lock when you leave the house. You can use it with a video doorbell to let somebody in so you can check uh, your one app from your video doorbell mm -hmm. and see who's there. Then you can unlock it. And some locks have a built-in camera. Yeah, that's cool. The gate smart lock, it's G-A-T-E, has a built-in motion-activated security camera, two-way audio, and a doorbell. You can see the video in real time with the app on your phone. It has a keypad and a cylinder for a key. Lockly, it's L-O-C-K-L-Y, has a smart lock with a built-in video doorbell. It has two-way audio, a touch screen, a fingerprint scanner, and a cylinder for a key. Hmm. So, pretty cool. It is pretty cool. These types of locks are good if you have older family members and you need to let in caregivers or if they're getting deliveries. Mm -hmm. Well, this would have been good for my parents. When they were older, they had nurses come to the house to take care of them. Okay. And it was hard for both of them to get up. So right. it would have been nice just to have an app that they could have unlocked or given them the code. Sure. What are some disadvantages? These are going to be more expensive than a standard lock. You're going to have to replace batteries over time. Dead batteries are going to be a problem. If the Wi-Fi is out and you're away, you can't see what's happening with your lock. And potentially someone could hack your Wi-Fi. Hmm. Smart locks are usually deadbolts? Right, most are. And some come in a kit. So you have an entrance knob or a lever with no lock on it. And then your so a stupid lock. Right, <laughs> a dumb lock. And then your smart lock would be the deadbolt. If you have two holes in your door, mm -hmm. if you have only one hole in your door, you can get a smart lock that has a knob or a lever. So when I was growing up, the house that we lived in, we only had an entrance lock. There was no deadbolt. There was okay. just a chain on the door. <laughs> with, High security, man. Which, I mean, it was like nailed into, I, I'm pretty sure it was nailed too, by the way, really? into the casing, the door casing. So, I mean, like, if anybody wanted to get into the house, you just push really hard, right? Right, right. Yeah. I'm pretty sure a, a stiff breeze would have knocked <laughs> that thing open. Ultralock has a combo kit, and Ultralock is U-L-T-R-A-L-O-Q. It's a deadbolt and a handle entrance lock. The lever lock has a fingerprint sensor. When it unlocks and you pull down on the lever, it opens the lever and the deadbolt lock which is pretty wild. It comes with a touchless fob to open the lock when you're next to the door, or you can unlock it with an app on your phone. Hmm. So a lot of different features. Cool. You can see what some of these kits look like if you go to the home centers online and search for smart door locks. At Home Depot, there were over 100 results when I checked, and at Lowe's, over 300 results. Wow. So they're getting pretty popular. Yeah. When you're shopping online, you can check the specifications to match the lock to your door. Especially if you live in an older home, you may not have a standard-sized entrance door or have a standard setback to the door. What is the standard? In the U.S., the standard entrance door is 80 inches by 36 inches and 1 and 3 quarter inches thick. 
Most smart locks will have a range of door thicknesses they will work with, for example, 1 and 3 eighths to 2 inches thick. The standard size opening for the hole in the door for the entrance lock or a deadbolt is 2 and 1 eighth inches in diameter. The setback for the lock, which is the distance from the edge of the door to the center of the hole for the lock, is either 2 and 3 eighths or 2 and 3 quarters. And the locks that I looked at, the latch will adjust to either size. But in some of the old homes that I remodeled in the Chicago area, they needed longer latches so a standard lock didn't work. Or when I replaced the locks, I had to special order a longer latch for the setback. And some had much smaller diameter holes. So I had to re-drill the hole opening. Uh -huh. Also check the door handing. The what now? It's H-A-N-D-I-N-G. The locks that I looked at were universal, but door handing means it can either be a right-handed lock or a left-handed lock. And some lever locks are one or the other. So if you're buying an entrance lock or a deadbolt, it might say right or left-handed. And to tell the door handing for an entrance door that opens into the house, when you're standing outside and looking at the door, if the hinges are on the right, it's right-handed. If the hinges are on the left, it's left-handed. Cool. Check the faceplate on the latch of your existing deadbolt or entrance knob. It's either going to be rounded, it's going to be rectangular with square corners, or you're going to have no faceplate. In that case, you have a drive-in latch. If you have a drive-in latch, you need a deadbolt that has that option to drive in the latch, or you're going to need a sharp chisel so you can mortise the edge of the door so that faceplate sits flush with the edge of the door. All right. When you're comparing locks, a grade 3 lock is basic residential security, a grade 2 is middle grade security, and grade 1 is the highest residential grade security. Grade 3 locks are tested for 800,000 openings. Wow. They have a 5 eighths inch latch bolt, and it will withstand two strikes with 75 foot-pounds of force. Huh. A grade 2 is tested for 800,000 openings. It has a 5 eighths inch latch, and it will withstand five strikes with 75 foot-pounds of force. A grade 1 is tested for 1 million openings. It has a 1 inch bolt, and it will withstand 10 strikes from 75 foot-pounds of force. And when you see a lock that says it has a security strike plate, that just means the strike plate is made out of thicker metal. It's going to have longer screws, usually three inches long, and that way it reaches into the stud behind the door jam. Hmm. Another thing you should compare is the warranty. Right. Any tips on removing a deadbolt? So one of the most common designs for a deadbolt, you have a thumb turn or a knob on the inside of the door, and two Phillips head screws. On the outside of the lock, you have your cylinder for a key. Mm -hmm. You would turn the knob on the inside of the door so the screws are exposed and remove the two screws. Then you can just pull off both sides of the lock. All right. The deadbolt latch is held to the door with two Phillips head screws on the edge of the door. You just remove those two screws and the latch will pull out. You might have to pry it or help pry it with a screwdriver, depending on the size of the hole. Okay. on the edge of the door. With most smart locks, you're replacing the inside and the outside of the lock and the latch. But if you really love the color or the shape of your existing lock, there's a lock called the Level Smart Lock. It's L-E-V-E-L. -E -E it's unique because the mechanism or the whole smart lock itself fits inside the opening where the old latch was, mm. and it works with the knob side and the cylinder side of your old deadbolt, which is pretty wild. And it has multiple adapters. It's going to fit most deadbolts. But I would check the old lock first, make sure it's compatible right. with, this, with this. You remove the old latch, you put in the new latch, and connect it to the smart lock that slides inside the opening for the lock. You're going to add your adapter, and now you're going to attach the old lock housing on each side of the door. So your old lock is now transformed into a smart lock. Cool. <laughs> That's pretty wild. And this is also good if you live in an apartment or you're renting. You could add this so you have a smart lock. And then when you move, 
you can just remove the smart part, keep your old latch, and put it back together and take the lock with you. Cool. Some top rated smart locks come from Quickset, K W I K S E T, Schlage, S C H L A G E, Yale, Y A L E, August, A U G U S T, Lockley, L O C K L Y, Ultra Lock, U L T R A L O Q, Simply Safe, S I M P L I S A F E, Igloo Home, I G L O O H O M E, and Level, L E V E L. Do you have anything else to add? This technology keeps changing, but I think that's a good overview of some of the things to think about when you're doing your own research. Yep. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our ebooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, books 1 through 15 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. And you can follow us on Instagram, Fix It Home Improvement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.